Hey everyone, it's Wildman, and in today's video, I did want to take a look at an analog horror video called The Boiled One Phenomenon. It's an incredibly unnerving piece of media that tackles the premise of a hijacked broadcast that left hundreds who witnessed it in a comatose state. While some argue that this interruption was something unholy, authorities have done their best to eliminate every trace of this cursed footage. And what's even creepier is that before you even begin to view this tape, you are given a list of precautions to take in order to keep yourself from suffering the same fate as those who witnessed the interruption firsthand. But before we get into it, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well as liking the video and commenting bra as usual. Also, I just launched a second channel called Cursed Media. Um, I have this video out right now, so feel free to check that one out after this one. And also my TikTok because I've started uploading on there as well. But yeah, enough plugging, let's get into it. So the tape does begin by stating, the following media has been curated with permission from personnel at Efrata-228. Great care has been taken to keep the identities of persons involved anonymous as they requested. Following this, there is a warning as well that states, this video contains elements which are known to cause mild to severe cognitohazardous conditions, including properties that may mentally and physically affect the viewer. Please refer to the following procedures in order to guarantee your safest possible viewing experience. So this video already starting off with an incredibly creepy tone and then it goes on to say that you should have the following within your vicinity before viewing this tape. The things that you should have include earplugs, a pencil, a sheet of paper, and a standard Christian Bible open to Psalms 91.10, which is a verse that can be found in the Bible which states, No harm will overtake you, nor disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And this verse is typically interpreted as having trust in God that he will keep you safe, which does kind of lay the foundation of what we're about to witness. Basically, it's going to be something demonic. This verse acting as a safeguard against the evils within the following footage. It then says that if something unusual begins speaking in tongues tangible to the naked ears, insert your earplugs and turn to your pencil and paper, to which you are directed to write the following on the page. Quote, I can see this paper, I can see my hand, I can't hear the screaming of thousands, I can't hear the feast, I am a moving, breathing human being on planet Earth. After these words are written, recite Psalms 9120 aloud. If memories and imagery of something unholy persist in your mind, pray. It's all you can do. Which in itself is a pretty terrifying concept because even after doing all of this, if nothing worked and your last resort is to pray, pretty safe to say that your odds of making it out don't look too great. In the event you are required to carry out these procedures, contact authorities immediately afterwards. You will be administered amnestics. Many appear to lead a normal life afterwards. And amnestics being this fictional prescription that will wipe certain parts of your memory away. And now after all of this preparation that you were supposed to take before viewing this tape, it finally begins. In the late 1990s, a now classified documentary based television program would debut from a local station in Pennsylvania. The program revolved around woodland plants and animals and was primarily directed toward children. The star of the show and narrator would talk about the wonders of nature, the dangers of it, how to appreciate it, and most importantly, how to protect yourself from it. Unfortunately, in early 2001, the program would be taken off the air due to the host passing away. But then something odd happens within the tape, because on August 13th, 2003, the 13th episode of the series began a rerun seemingly out of nowhere. The following audio recording depicts the beginning segments of the episode. Good morning, bushwhackers. Today we're venturing into the heart of the forest to find a plant that's as beautiful as it is deceptive. Poison oak. And within this brief clip from the show, the host who we will be calling Phil, given his anonymity, is teaching the viewers of the show about poison ivy, how to identify it, and the plant's origins. We all know about it, and here in Pennsylvania, it's not as common, but still something to look out for. And here on we aim to uncover all the wonderful secrets that nature has to offer, no matter how minuscule, 
or gigantic. So let's get going, shall we? Found primarily in deep North American woodlands, poison oak has many different names and places of origin, also referred to as the tree of heaven. Can you imagine that? In China and Taiwan, one of these invasive species made its way to America in the 1700s and took its ground here boldly. As many of us know, it's infamous. However, when the clip finishes, it says that during one of the interlude segments, an anomalous broadcast would hijack the program. This broadcast depicted a video of a red, melted face that spoke to the viewer in a warm, yet deeply disconcerting voice. This face and its properties will be hereby referred to as Fen228. As Fen228 spoke, clips of footage and even live camera feed monitoring hospitals and bedrooms would occasionally overlay on the screen, obscuring Fen228's face. The most remembered Fen228 speaking English, multiple non-English speaking viewers remembered understanding every word that was spoken. The duration of the clip has been shortened and the audio has been muffled, reversed, and dampened. These altercations are absolutely necessary to suppress its hazardous attributes as effectively as possible. Watch with blue light glasses and insert your earplugs. And with that, the tape begins. There's definitely something that's just really unnerving about this video. Perhaps it's the subtle ominous sounds that are playing and the reverbed pitch, and on top of that, the audio being reversed that has always been really creepy to me. Like in certain instances when there are hidden messages within songs when you do reverse them, I always found that to be really unnerving. And a user named CometCraft4950 did comment on the video, having a rough translation of what Fan228's message said. Quote, The manifestation of my being is here. Kinda hard to tell because there's a loud sound over it. You'll be asleep in bed. I will be there and watch over you. When you wake, you will not be able to move any part of you. When the doctors finally find you, they will not see me. But you will and I'll see you too. Forever, I'll see you. After the clip, it states that the broadcast, which will now be known as Broadcast 813, was viewed by roughly 530 residents throughout the southern Pennsylvania area, and upon viewing, left many severely distraught. Aside from the discomfort and paranoia that Fen228's television presence has brought to the viewers, there were other side effects that these viewers experienced that were highly unnatural. Many viewers reported not being able to keep the image of Fen228's face out of their minds. Some even continued to hear the voice days after viewing. A victim who requested to remain anonymous claimed that the face was living in his brain and feeding on his spine. Another described trumpets playing in their ears before they fell asleep. There was truly something demonic hiding inside of this cursed tape. However, what that was is unknown. And unfortunately, this is only the beginning, because apart from the paranoia and discomfort, the side effects have really just begun. August 14th, 2003. The Great Northeast Blackout of 2003. 
After the cursed broadcast, it stated that the troubleshooters were able to detect the anomalous frequency which interrupted the airing of Tree of Heaven. The NERC ordered by the Ephrata branch to have all power grids local to the state of Pennsylvania disabled by 4pm to prevent further escalation of the anomaly and the public knowledge of broadcast 813 and the NERC being the North American Electric Reliability Corporation. And so following this broadcast, they pretty much just decided to cut the power in the entire area to prevent any further interruptions. Which I did find a little bit weird because why would they shut down the power of an entire area instead of just shutting down the broadcasts until further notice. It really makes it more suspicious as if they know what this is. And not only was the public being left in the dark about what was happening, they were also being physically left in the dark because NERC decided to cut the power of the entire area, which did cause the blackout of 2003 where 50 million people were without power, and some not getting it back until days later. And what's pretty interesting is that this was a real incident that did happen, because in 2003, as stated in the video, more than 50 million people were without power from Vermont to New York to Cleveland to Detroit and Toronto. It began shortly after 4 p.m. on August 14th, 2003. We're not quite sure what's going on. We're gonna to try to stay calm. Many of the uh, intersections, the traffic lights are are completely out thousands of people leaving the city when have you ever seen a skyline shot of manhattan that looked like this this dreadful blackout lasting for 29 hours however for some it lasted up to four days to get their power back on however in reality this wasn't caused by a strange broadcast interruption but rather by some overgrown trees that came into contact with the power lines going back into the tape it says that during the outage all traces of broadcast 813 were collected by the Afrata branch and seemingly wiped from existence including news articles from the morning after the broadcast internet posts, recordings, and more. Essentially everything that had to do with broadcast 813 was being buried to prevent the public from finding out what this broadcast truly meant. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, it's starting to say that the cause of the blackout was being covered up and claimed to have been a combination of human error and a result of trees falling onto sagging power lines. And as a result, new news segments were implemented to carry this narrative to the public. Because what they were trying to do is convince people that there was no broadcast 813 and their memory was just wrong. The tape then cutting to a new segment called Aftermath. 12 days after broadcast 813 was blocked from the air, a historically massive influx of pseudocoma occurred throughout the state of Pennsylvania, leaving 509 people affected. Now, pseudocoma, according to the National Library of Medicine, is, quote, the locked-in syndrome pseudocoma describes patients who are awake and conscious but selectively deferent, have no means of producing speech, limb, or facial movements. People with such brainstem lesions often remain comatose for some days or weeks, needing artificial respiration and then gradually wake up, but remaining paralyzed and voiceless. It's honestly a very terrifying condition to have, especially for this to be affecting 509 people who saw the broadcast. It then goes on to state that more than 60 victims were interviewed. Many of these interviews held unavailing results that often led to more questions, and many others had results that required archival or termination. However, fairly late into the investigation, the Afrata branch was notified of a particularly odd case revolving around one Job Zamperini, an elderly victim of the anomalous pseudocoma outbreak. Job Zamperini specifically requested his alias to be used in future records instead of his real name, which will remain classified. And it's here where we get to learn a little bit more about this estranged man and his involvement in such a terrifying incident. Zamperini was a war vet and fluent in Morse code putting him on the mark as a potential interviewee as soon as the outbreak was put under investigation. After a very odd photo was taken in his backyard by his visiting grandson, his family became deeply troubled and convinced that his house was haunted. And what we're shown in the photo is something that depicts Fen228 standing next to the small playhouse in Zamperini's backyard.
Upon viewing this photo, Zamperini claimed something horrible and unholy was with him, and would hurt him and possibly others if he described it and what it was telling him. And show next is a recording of Zamperini speaking to an officer, T. Gomez, regarding broadcast 813. Hello, Mr. I'm Officer Gomez. I hope you're doing well today. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions regarding your condition and possibly um, unholiness within your home that your family had mentioned? And upon watching this interview, we can see that Zamperini is bedridden as a result of his locked-in syndrome. He answers in Morse and agrees to proceed with an interview. Okay, first and uh, foremost, did you notice any onset symptoms before you lost complete mobility of your body? Face, huh? Hmm. When did you begin seeing this face? Interesting. Many of the people who have seen the broadcast that you saw on August the 13th described having vivid and upsetting hallucinations. Do you think this is something your brain has created? Can you please describe this face to me? Hmm. I, uh, I still don't see it. Have you been having any hallucination aside from the face? I'm sorry to hear that. Are these screams constant? Thank you. You shedding light on this is helping more than you know. And after this interview, what plays is the unedited broadcast that infected the minds of those who were unfortunate enough to witness it. And now you will too. Listen closely. Do you hear it? You will hear the laughter of thousands as the sky opens up. You will hear the trumpets play their happy sounds. The strong blood of life will pour down onto us all. Together, we will be still. Together. A peaceful for together, welded by love and purest connection, be still. And honestly, when it comes to this video, there is a true feeling of fear that it inflicts on you. And although out of context, the Boiled Man doesn't really seem like much of a device of horror on its own, but it's only when the video begins to add the layers of context as to what this entity can do to you, putting you in a state of complete immobility, being trapped inside your own body, and haunted by the creature that did this to you. All you can do is hear the screams of people, most likely the others that are sharing the same fate as you. Although the worst part is that there is no end. Like being stuck inside a never-ending sleep paralysis nightmare. Your demon by your side, grinning at your suffering. This is honestly one of my favorite pieces of analog horror that I've seen in a while. It's really creative and honestly pretty terrifying when it puts you inside of the narrative, going through all of the prep work that you have to do before even watching the video. And then calling back to that at the end is really great. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this one. Did it freak you out or was it just okay? I mean, I thought it was pretty good. And yeah, be sure to check out my second channel. There's a video posted there already. And a huge thank you to all of my channel members and my ultimate tiers. Kareem Ariano, Dreadator, Alejandro from the Tower, Kpop Lover X3, and Knight98. And yeah, see you later. Bye. Love you.